Hey, vinyl community and YouTubers everywhere, yeah. I've been out picking up some vinyl, and I'm going to show them to you. I want to give a shout out to my little brother, Ian, over there in Singapore. High five vinyl news. I'm sure all my subscribers are subscribed to him and more. He does a lot of evaluations of stuff, and he plays great music in the process, and he didn't even mention it, but I saw it. He played this record here not long ago. Piano, Japanese pianist, has the obi near mint condition, Ottoman New York by Fumio Karashima, plays a tunes like Stella by Starlight, Ottoman New York, my one and only love, there is no greater love, on the Polydor label, near mint. Music is worldwide. It's amazing, okay? Here's most of us would have never heard of this person. I hadn't heard of him, but he had this record back there when he was playing it. I looked the guy up to get a really nice copy of this Japanese record. Where did I have to go to get it? I had to go to Poland. Of course, Discogs went to Poland. Discogs is fantastic. So here, a Japanese record to an American from Poland, and I say, ain't it grand? Budget records. Budget records in the 50s and the 60s, and probably even a little later on, were extremely popular and quite interesting. We tend to not pay much attention to them now. You know, they're usually in the dollar bins and names often that we don't recognize. Well, our friend in the VC, Kaiwaza, he just shows Hawaiian records, exotica, that kind of stuff. So many of you may not watch his channel. He was doing a, a three or four part video about his Hawaiian music budget records. It was quite interesting and this person left a comment on one of them. Rock Rarities for a Song Budget LPs, Brian McFadden. Now, he was a TV person. I recognized his name. I recognized his voice when I heard him. He's done a couple videos about these books. I got them uh, off of Amazon. Here was the first one I've been reading, Rhythm and Blues on Budget LPs, Brian McFadden. These were just fascinating, and I've learned more about the, the budget vinyl from those 50s, 60s, and 70s than I ever knew. Lots of information about the labels, and even one of the big labels is our friend from Command Records was on one of the big budget labels before he started Command. This book, both of these books are just highly recommended. And one of the things I wanted to show that he talked about in here, trying to zip up the labels. Now you see there is a picture of a black and white picture, and then there's the album cover where an artist colored it in to make it look more like a painting. I should have got that information down. I forget the name of this artist right now. But these records are quite interesting, and I just wanted to give you a little quick heads up here. I got this one. Now, this looks like a photograph, but this is a black and white photograph that's been colored to look like a painting. B.B. King, now, of course, you all would recognize this record. It's been reissued here just recently, actually, and been reissued a couple times over the years. So a, rec a first pressing of this would bring big bucks. I paid $6 for this record. It's still in the shrink. There's no record in it. It's just the outer jacket. I wanted this artwork. I paid $4 for postage, so $10 here. I want to be able to recognize these things. And, of course, people like B.B. King, uh, that name is known, and so those records you're not going to find for a steal. In this book, there are many records that interest me of people who were influential on other people or maybe had small careers. If we don't recognize their name, we don't think of them. Those are records. There's one record in here. It's actually a kind of a Dixieland record 
on Discogs right now, the only copy for sale is $150. So if when you're out digging, when you guys are going to the thrift shop, you get these two books, you get a little of the information in here. Yeah, BB King, that record, you're not likely to find it in the thrift store. And there's other BB Kings and Lightning Hopkins uh, because... Uh, the, guys, the main guy that started these budget labels, he was a big fan of the early blues. And back then, these guys weren't known, and of course, uh, he could record them, but out their records quite inexpensively. So check out those books and uh, give them a shot. I've picked up a couple brand new records just released in the last week or two. Here's the first one. Still in the shrink, Little Stephen and the Disciples of Soul, Summer of Sorcery. The Little Stephen here is Little Stevie Van Zant. Uh, this is a two LP with three sides. Uh, side four is just blank. I'll read the hype sticker on the front, and that kind of gives you a big part of what you need to know here. His first album of all original material in 20 years. All 12 songs are original compositions recorded with his powerful 14. 15 piece backing man, the Disciples of Soul. Well, I took a listen to this record today. I did preview it uh, before I ordered it from Amazon, and I like Soul, and I like the idea of this. And my first impression after one listen is 14 piece backing band. It's not just a 14 piece backing band, there's lots of other musicians on some of the tracks. Uh, number of backing vocalists, which uh, generally speaking, I like all of that. But uh, after just listening, my first impression was the arrangements are quite busy. It's hard to just focus in, and I think you lose a little bit of the melody. At any rate, uh, that's just with my first listen. Comes with nice uh, Heavy printed inner sleeves with lots of information. Trying to get it up upside down. That's the way it comes out, isn't it? Uh, nice labels. Second record. Get a little artwork there. Lyrics, uh, I would say, are uh, maybe a little bit topical, and uh, lyrics really have to mean something to us uh, for us to really enjoy the lyrics like we do the music. Now, this is a record I followed along with the lyric sheet so I could understand what they were singing. You can just say uh, the lyrics don't matter. The singing is nice. The music is nice, and so whether you relate to the things are singing about or not doesn't matter. This is a new record just issued and I've got another new record that just came out that uh, maybe I should have played before this one. They have a little more in common than I would have thought. Next record just came out. In fact, uh, on Discogs, they don't even have the vinyl listed yet, just the CD. Hype sticker. Playing for change. Listen to the music. 180 gram audio file vinyl. A souvenir poster. Okay, so what is this? Well, playing for change uh, says, uh, I think Wikipedia, it's a multimedia movement created to inspire, connect, and bring peace to the world. Well, good luck with that, folks, but uh, I'm enjoying the music. I saw a track that got me interested and went and checked out this record and ordered it. I'm going to put a link down here so that you can watch that track if you want, and it features Keb Mo doing walk Walking Blues, which was written by Sunhouse in 1930 and also covered by Robert Johnson, and it will feature a number of musicians from six countries around the world, all playing at the same time with Keb Mo, and that gives you a little idea of how this is done. There'll be a recording with some famous or well-known people, and then there will be various other people that are maybe famous in their own locality, but unknown to us 
us are unknown to me. And you see on the cover here, we got Dr. John, we got Buddy Guy, we got a number of people on this record. The Doobie Brothers, Ellis Hall, uh, you can just go on. A lot of these names, I don't know who they are. Uh, musically, it's quite good. Now, Discog says that uh, this is rock, blues, folk, reggae, world, and country. And so that means there's a little bit of everything on here. Uh, this record was recorded live in 25 countries and features 210 different musicians. And unlike the Stevie Van Zant that I just showed, the musical arrangements were so busy it distracted from the music. Even though you got musicians all over the world playing here, that's not the case. Amazon rating, only 16 people have rated it. They give it a 4.3 out of 5. And uh, I think the reason for that is see if you just like a certain kind of music you get a record you're expecting something and it's not what you like then you you give it a little lower rating but if you like a lot of variety a lot of different kinds of stuff like I said rock blues folk reggae world and country you're going to like this record and I would say if there's two of those that are featured more on this record a little bit of blues and in particularly the reggae a lot of reggae rhythms and some people from those countries down there performing. $25 from Amazon. It's on the Motema label, uh, which is based in Harlem. Even though this, uh, the lyrics get a little bit topical, uh, maybe not quite political, but, uh, you know, let's join hands and save the world. Yeah, right. Musically, very enjoyable. Comes with the poster. The poster... Shows you a bunch of the musicians on here. And then at the back of the poster gives you the information about each track, a little bit about the song, the various musicians that play on it. Stevie Van Zant there, if you're a super fan of his, you probably need that record. Uh, if you like the more orchestral kind of sounding, uh, we can't quite say rock music, soul music, you would like that record? This record, I can recommend. The Keb Mo track is not on this album. I suspect it'll be on the next album that come out. But you do have Buddy Guy on this album. Try to whiz through these other records just a little quicker. I want to show this one. This is the Vinyl Me Please Classics, their issue. I just got this recently in the mail. Al Green, Call Me. And I'm not going to talk about this or take it out of the package. I've actually not even opened it and played it yet. Where we've had a few complaints about some of the Vinyl Me Please stuff. I've made the note several times before. They're up in their game all the time. This record was sold out before it ever shipped. So you have to be subscribed to it. Well, what's a couple of the things I'm talking about here? Lacquer Cut by Ryan K. Smith. And this baby was pressed at Quality Record Pressing in Salina, Kansas. Got the best of everything you can get right there. And I like Al Green. I've become a fan of the Cramps, but I have not seen an original in the wild yet. Of course, I don't get out much, so I picked up this 2014 reissue of their first album. I'm very happy with it. Comes in a nice inner sleeve here and which a few of you will like some nice red vinyl so I'm building my cramps collection but uh, I need to get out more and try to find an original see what happens folks uh, when the record isn't packed quite as good as it should be from the east coast to the west coast and you got a mint 6 eye Columbia that's what can happen. I got this record all the way from Germany. Kev Mo, just like you. Music on vinyl. This is a 2014 issue. Probably been sold out for some time. This is a mint sealed copy. I got a sticker here. Ordered it from Made in Berlin. Grooves.land. 
They sent some other information. Keb Mo, blues guitar guy, singer, quite good. He started about the same time CDs started. So a lot of his early catalog is not on vinyl, but is slowly being put on vinyl. I forgot to write down when this was actually recorded, but I can tell you I got a number of Keb Mo CDs, but this record is outstanding. Pick up some of these new blues guys. They're just as good, if not better, than the old dead guys. From 1965, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, their first record. A little damage down there. A little water damage on the cover here. This is a first press VG condition. Even in this condition, uh, almost 20 bucks. Uh, but the record's in nice, clean shape, and so I'm happy to get this. And now I need that one that has uh, Eric Clapton and the Beano cover on it. That one's hard to get. Got my backpack on. It's full of records, and I'm heading home. <laughs> ¶¶ 